Hi everyone, Frypone here, back with another one. Today I want to talk to you about LSAS dumping and why you need to have a defense in depth plan here. First, before I show you any of these techniques in this video, I want to show you the main reason that this is still a threat. In most organizations, they don't have credential guard. Credential guard is what you need to protect yourself against LSAS dumping. LSAS dumping, one of the most common techniques that an adversary is going to use to get credentials out of a system. LSAS consists of the LSAS process, which is launched by when in it when Windows starts. All of the credentials are stored within the LSAS process. These are credentials for NTLM and Kerberos keys, and many famous tools like Mimikatz dump LSAS to get the things out of memory, to get the credentials out of memory. With Credential Guard, you have a hypervisor. That hypervisor creates a new process called LSA ISO. With LSA ISO, the credentials live in the virtualized process. They don't live in LSAS preventing what I'm going to show here in just a minute, which is an LSAS dump. All right. So in short, if you don't have Credential Guard, stop the video now. Go turn on Credential Guard. I shouldn't still be having this conversation. This is an old technique. This is the only way to stop LSAS dumping. And you're going to say, but Ripone, I got EDR. Yeah, you do. Does that matter? No. Why? There are some absolutely foolproof ways to dump LSAS without using the traditional LSAS process. Let's talk about these. One of these is using forensic techniques to dump the entirety of memory. Yeah. What if I dump the whole of memory? Do you think your EDR is going to notice if I dump the whole of memory? No, they're not going to care. Why? They think you're trying to do system forensics. They want you to be able to do that. And that being said, we're going to take a look at WinPmem here today. So WinPmem is essentially a memory dumping utility. It dumps the entirety of memory in a raw format. If you're on a pen test or a red team engagement, and you're bumping up against DDR over and over and over again, say you've hit I don't know, Sentinel-1 or you know, Carbon Black, or you keep bumping up against the EDR but when you're trying to dump LSAS. Depending on the speed of your connection and how well you have compromised this host, you can use the forensic techniques to dump what you need out of LSAS, and they will never be detected or never be responded to. Because what will happen any SOC analyst is going to see win PMIM and go, that's a blue team utility. Why would the adversary be using that? Also, if you look at virus total for win PMIM, undetected by all. So what does that mean? If you have enough bandwidth to upload a large file, you can use when PMEM to dump the whole of memory and then use volatility to pull the credentials. Old simple trick. Still works. 2024. If you don't have credential guard, you're done. Now we've got our typical host over here. We've got Clint Barton. In this case, he's the attacker. And we're going to run when PMEM and create an image. So basically, when PMIM mini x64rc2.exe, and we're going to do fizzmem raw. Now, if we take a look at Defender, I'm going to make sure Defender's on. Let's take a quick look here. If it is not on, we will turn it on. I think it's probably just, yeah, automatic sample submission is the only thing that's off because I don't like it eating my beacons. But cloud delivered protection, real time protection, tamper protection, they're all on. Right? 
And it doesn't matter what your EDR is here. The best you're going to get is detection. It's not going to block this. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a FizzMem raw. This is going to take a second. And while this is going, if we jump over here to Sim, and you want a defense in depth policy against something like this, you can create Sim rules that look for the usage of when PMIM, right? And then code 4688 and process name when PMIM. You should also do this for many of the forensic utilities that are known for dumping RAM. This can give you an advanced attacker you can catch this way, right? You can, you can catch an advanced attacker because an advanced attacker is going to be tenacious. They're not going to keep bumping up against your EDR without doing something about it. And if they really want an LSAS dump, this is a foolproof way to get it. Foolproof. It just works every time. The issue is having to deal with the big file that's created. So you would just create then code 4688 in process name. We're just doing star win PMM star. This is a leucine query, not your typical KQL. And if we come over here, you can see here it is Clint Barton process name when PMM RC2.exe. So quite simply, we're creating a RAM dump of all of RAM. Now, why is this a problem? It's a problem because the file is enormous. It's going to be the entirety of RAM. So in most cases, this is 8 to 16 gigs, right? Most hosts nowadays have 8 to 16 gig in file size. Now, does this mean that you're not going to be able to get it? No, absolutely not. In today's day and age with fast internet connections and fast WAN speeds and cloud, it's pretty easy to get a big file. You just have to be patient. So in our case here, we can simply use updog and we can upload the file or if you have an SSH tunnel or however method you have connecting to this host, you just get the file and you wait. So I'll choose a file here. I'll go to my downloads. I can see FizzMem raw here. This is my file. Notice it's nine gigs in size because I have, well, it's roughly eight gigs in size because I have eight gigs of RAM in this system. Choose open <clears throat> and choose upload. Now this is gonna take a little while. So I'm gonna pause the video right here and then we'll move into our Kali uh, reversal here once I uh, have this uploaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause. All right, and we're back. At this point, we have our file. You can see I've done ls grep for FizzMem, and we have uploaded our file now. It's enormous, right? It is a raw physical memory image. There are some other techniques where you can cut this up and only send the pieces you need across to your beacon. I'm not going to go through every technique I have here because this is one of my uh, really good tricks to get LSAS uh, out of memory around EDR. Because EDR has gotten to the point now where detecting LSAS dumps is pretty tough. You got to really fight with it to get by. This is pretty foolproof. And there are ways that you can take this memory file and cut, up, cut it up only to get what you need out of it and send that across. But I'm not going to go through that in this particular video. So quite simply, the next step here, we come over here to volatility. We're going to run our Python 3 vol.py. The file is fizzmem raw. This is in my home directory as the tilde slash. And then we're going to do windows hash dump hash dump. We'll go ahead and start that with the password here. And here we go. It's running volatility. Now this could be recall. This could be any method you can dump hashes out of memory because this is what Mimikatz does. This is what all LSAS dumps do. They dump the memory from the LSAS process. In this case, we just have all of memory, right? So in having all of memory, we can find LSAS secrets, but we can also find any other secrets on the host that we would look for that would be in memory. So this is a good, you know, comprehensive technique to get secrets out of a host. We're almost done here. And let's finish scanning. And then we should see some hashes drop out. And there you go. How to do an LSS dump and be successful every time.
this works. It will continue to work. There will always be some forensic utility that needs to grab the whole of memory. It's the nature of system forensics. They work with the EDR companies to make sure that they're not quarantined, that they're not stopped from doing this because they're blue team tools. So that being the case means that if you are creative, you will always be able to get the credentials that you need. Now, if, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you have implemented Credential Guard, and this is not a problem for you because the credentials don't exist in that particular piece of memory. They exist inside a hypervisor in the T2 chip. You won't get credentials this way. So in short, go turn on Credential Guard. If not, if you're a red teamer and you're watching this video, maybe you learned a little new trick here. This is one that just walks around EDR. If you don't feel like fighting with it, You've had a, a rough week. I don't feel like fighting with Sentinel-1 today. Uh, okay, let's just do this trick. And it'll work. You'll get your credentials. You may get other things as well. But that's it for this week. Thank you. And hack the planet to defend better.